Hey guys, it's Jamie from Warlord Games here, and today I am going to be showing you how I painted the KV1 and KV2 kit. If you are interested in picking up this kit, please check out the link in the video description below, and it would also really help us out if you could remember to like, comment and subscribe. As you can see, this kit contains two full turrets, allowing me to use the vehicle as two different variants, and is therefore usable throughout the entire war. A vehicle produced by the Soviet Union, it also saw action in the captured capacity in both Finnish and German forces. The kit also includes a driver figure as well as 8 infantry, which can be used as tank riders or elsewhere in your forces. A fully detailed and varied decal sheet is included, which can be used to individualise your vehicle for any of the forces in which the KV was used. It is also worth noting that other Soviet kits include decals that can also be used on the KV, and we stock a range of metal crew should you be painting a number of KVs and want to individualise them all. Today's video continues from the previous, and this time shows how to paint any remaining details on your KV, how to apply decals, and finally how to use an enamel wash to add depth to the highly detailed kit. We will also look at using enamel streaking effects in order to simulate rain and grime falling on the vehicle. The next and final video shall look at nature effects and mud. The first detail we're going to be painting today is any metallic areas. This includes the machine gun and the tracks. We're going to start by applying a base coat of Vallejo model colours dark grey to all these areas. It's important that we have waited for the filter from the previous video to dry as acrylic paint will not settle on a wet white spirit based paint. Also if you are new to my videos anything that I do to the turret of the vehicle I will also do to the hull of the vehicle even if I do not necessarily show it. Vallejo model colour paints are perfect for applying by hand, as they cover nicely. The next step is to apply decals to the vehicle. In order to do this, I use some tweezers, a craft knife and some water. I move the decals around until I am happy with their positioning before moving on to the next step. Now the KV is a great vehicle for making the most of our decal sheets. This is due to the fact that it has large panels where we can apply these decals. The decals are printed on a thin carrier film so our modulation work is still going to show through and no detail is going to be obscured. It's also worth noting that other Russian kits include decals that can be used on the KV to further individualise your vehicles. I apply Vallejo Decal Medium which is an alcohol based product through my airbrush on top of the decals. Now what this does is it slightly melts the carrier film so it's less obvious that they are decals and they begin to look like they have been painted on. It also protects the decals from being touched later on. The next step is to dry brush the metallic areas with gunmetal grey. Now a dry brush is where you only have very little paint on the brush. So we wipe most of the paint off using a piece of kitchen towel. And we very lightly drag the brush across any raised areas. This means that only the detail is going to be hit by the paint. And the dark grey that we applied earlier is going to act as a shadow. I really like using a shadow colour that is non-metallic with my metallic colours as not only do we have the contrast between light and dark, we also have the contrast between metallic and non-metallic. We're going to use a very basic weathering technique now called sponge chipping which is where we take a piece of blister pack foam, we tear it so it has a jagged edge and we apply very little paint to it. We dab most of the paint off onto a piece of paper 
and then we use the sponge to dab on some chips. The pattern will be random, just like real chips in real life, and the amount that we do is completely up to us. This technique can also be used on infantry's helmets to simulate wear and tear. And when using it on a vehicle, it's best to apply it mostly on areas of high traffic, such as toolboxes, hatches, and the steps on the side of the KV. Also hit any decals on the vehicle. The next step is to apply an enamel wash, and we're going to be using Amal by Mick Jimenez's panel line, Deep Brown. Now the important thing about an enamel wash is that we can remove it with white spirit like I'm doing here. So if we get it on any areas that we don't want shading, so any areas that aren't detail or panel lines, and we've pulled it accidentally onto a flat panel, we can simply remove it using a slightly dampened brush. Now when working with enamels, I always recommend that you use cheap synthetic brushes, as the white spirit in the enamel will damage the brush and we don't want to be damaging our more expensive Kalinsky Sable brushes. Now I take time to go around the vehicle, adding this wash to any panel lines, where any two pieces meet, where there's any detail that needs shading, etc, etc. You can see here how nicely the wash flows around detail and we have a long amount of time to work with the wash. If we're unhappy with how the wash looks, we can simply remove it using enamel odorless thinner and start again. Enamel washes are very similar to oil washes, which you might have seen in other videos, but the enamel is a lot quicker to work with than the oil paint. I apply a track wash from Amal by Mikimenez to the tracks of the vehicle. I'm not so worried about being neat here, as what this will do, will si it will simulate rust and dirt in the recesses of the tracks. If I get the wash on any parts of the vehicle I don't want it, I can again remove it. And I take a brush lightly dampened with enamel odorless thinner and drag it along the tops of the tracks to remove it from the raised surfaces. I am now ready to begin applying some streaking effects to the vehicle. Now these streaking effects simulate dirt, grime and rain marks on the side of the vehicle and work best on vertical plates. To begin with we lightly dampen the surface with enamel odorless thinner before applying Amol by McKimenez's rain mark streaking effect and streaking grime effect in thin lines on the side of the vehicle. Now it's important when doing any sort of weathering technique, including the chipping that we did earlier, that you hit the decals so that they look like part of the vehicle rather than something that's been stuck on top. I then take a flat synthetic brush, lightly dampened with enamel odorless thinner, and drag the streaks out so that they fade and look natural. How much you drag them out will define how stark they are, or how subtle they are. 
It's important that the motion of the brush is the same all the time. So in this case, I'm doing a downwards motion. As if you change the motion of the brush, you risk taking the streak off completely. I repeat the process on the other side of the KV2 turret. And if at any point I'm unhappy with the streaks, I can simply remove them using enamel odorless thinner. And I have quite a long time to work with the streaks due to the fact that they are enamel based. What you'll also find happening is that the streaks actually mix and create different tones on the vehicle. This is perfectly acceptable and in fact adds an extra level of depth to the vehicle. How many streaking effects you do and what different colours you use are completely up to you and will help with the narrative of your vehicle. Weathering is all about telling a story about where that vehicle has been and how much action it has saw. It is possible to also do these streaking effects with acrylic. However, I find it a lot easier to work with enamel due to the fact that it can be removed and you don't necessarily have to be a neat painter as the white spirit or odorless thinner will help you clean up and make the vehicle look better. The large flat surfaces of the KV provide a perfect base for this sort of weathering effect. And you can see here that I've already applied some streaks to the KV1 turret. But what we can actually do is layer those streaks and add an extra level of streaks on top once they have dried. Using multiple layers of streaks allows me to create different effects and have different levels of intensity or subtleness with each streak. A flat brush is best used for this, as a round brush would actually take the enamel paint off. There are also a couple of vertical surfaces on the main body of the vehicle where we can use streaks, namely at the back and front of the vehicle. Hopefully you guys at home can see how streaks are easy to achieve and how they can add to your vehicle. I recommend leaving these overnight to dry. And if you come back next time for the final instalment of the series, I will be showing you how to achieve some other effects, including fuel stains, wet effects and mud. Hopefully I'll see you next time, and please remember to like, comment and subscribe.